Well, here we are in the loft. It's been mighty cold this week. I think we dipped down to minus 10 last night, which is pretty rare in this part of the world. But what better way to warm yourself up than having a couple of glasses of whiskey? So today you've got two bottles to treat you to rather than just the one. So I'm now in the loft, the last video I recorded was in the living room which has all the acoustic qualities of a squash court. So I've moved up here, hopefully it's a little bit better, um, and in doing so came up with the name for this YouTube channel. So here we are, welcome to the Whiskey Loft, I hope you like it, it's, it's quite warm up here now, it hasn't been, um, but it's all the warmer because I've got these two very special bottles of whiskey here to review. What better way to warm yourself up, not just with whiskey, but with car strength whiskey. And that's what these two are. They're the Bunnerhaven car strengths. I've got the 2021 release and the 2022 release. Uh, and I'm gonna compare them for you, make sure that you kind of see the differences because they are very, very different. Despite being identical looking almost on the bottle, just uh, two dates to kind of indicate uh, that they're different years, they do taste very different to one another. And I think it's it's a really, really interesting comparison to make. So car strength whiskey is a really interesting category. For those of you who are new to whiskey, um, car strength is much, much stronger. Most whiskey that's sold in the supermarkets, let's say, or you know your average kind of bottles that you pick up, particularly of blends, are around 40% ABV, they're diluted down. And that makes them a lot smoother to drink. Uh, other bottles, of certain single malts, will you'll see a little bit higher than that, uh, diluted down to about 46%. And there are reasons for that, uh, which we won't go into today. But car strength whiskey comes straight from the cask at much, much stronger strength. So, for example, this one here, this is the 2021 edition, this is 55.1%. So, you're getting a lot higher ABV. Now what's the benefit of that, you might ask, which is a reasonable question, because higher ABV might mean more burn uh, on the back of the throat, uh, and it gets you drunk quicker if you drink too much of it. But actually what you realize when you, when you kind of get your palate used to these higher strength whiskies is that the higher alcohol content carries with it a lot more flavor and gives it, delivers a lot more punch as well. So. That is one of the great, great benefits. And you can really, really tell the difference. If you put together side by side a car strength whiskey with an equivalent 40% uh, whiskey, you'll, you'll notice the difference immediately. And if your palate is a little bit trained to it, you'll really start to pick up on those extra flavors that are coming through, and those extra tasting notes that you're getting from drinking slightly higher ABV whiskey. Now, one of my favorite whiskies out there is the Bunner Harvin 12. It's a delicious dram and if you haven't tried it, I do recommend going out picking up a bottle because it's very, very affordable as well. It's an incredible value for money. So when they said they were going to release a car strength whiskey, I was super, super excited. And in 2021, they did. And now here comes the second iteration of it, the 2022 edition. So that leads us on nicely to the car strength Bonnerhavens here. And as I said, they are very different. So let's take the 2021 version to start with initially. In fact, if I show you the color of these two to start off with, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the, the 2022 edition it has a slightly darker color, slightly uh, browner, I suppose. And this is the 2021. I tried these last night, not for the first time, but made some notes, so we'll see, we'll see if, I, if my notes uh, from last night are reliable. The first thing I, I really pick up off this is there's this kind of creamy vanilla note, I suppose a custody vanilla note that, that comes forward. Uh, it's, it, it's quite fresh and quite creamy. You get those, 
there were those oak spices there for sure and there's a resinous note in there as well that I, I presume comes from the casks for me on the nose this smells like Bunnerhaven 12 it smells like that standard 12 year old bottling but more turned up dialed up and it it's all the better for it of course there's nothing wrong with the, the normal 12 year old it's one of my absolute favorites but this is just more of it which is fantastic let's have a try yeah so you're getting that 12 year old experience that you get with the Bunnerhaven 12 year old you're getting that experience but just so much more I mean it makes sense it is a 12 year old car strength when they brought this out that's what I expected I expected it to be like the 12 year old but even more so and that is what it is and it's it's, it's very very nice for it it's delicious and when you add water to this you get some more of that fruity uh, some of those fruity notes as well you get more kind of it's more stone there is dried fruit in there that you the influence of the sherry casks is certainly there which they use to make this but with this one you get more of that kind of fresh fruit fresh juicy fruit I'm thinking peaches I suppose stone fruit that is a common tasting note for these kind of things but you're getting some of that in there for sure it's very very nice it's very nice so then i was very excited when they said they were going to bring out a new one this year i, I wasn't expecting it to be any different i thought it was just a, a limited release of the car strength bonahaven but then i tried it and blimey is it different i i wasn't expecting it to be this different i have to say and the first thing you get, I mean, on the nose on this one, the first thing you get is 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 chocolate. I mean, I, chocolate's not a note that I've ever picked up loads in whiskey. I have to say, I, I don't normally pick it up. I've started picking it up more, and in this one, I re it really hit me how much chocolate you get off the nose. It's a much richer uh, scent, and yeah, and. A lot more spice in there as well, a lot more of the uh, kind of cinnamon and nutmeg and clove and those kind of things that are kind of common with these whiskies. It, it smells better than it did last night actually, I'm not sure why that is, maybe I was uh, a little bit desensitised after my dinner. But so much punch on the nose from a much richer, I'm guessing he more heavily sherried or different kind of sherry cask being used. I'd imagine it's just a slight more. There's just a slight, slightly more sherry used in the maturation here, and it's 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 absolutely wonderful on the nose. It's an absolute pleasure. Richer, fruitier notes, and this time rather than that fresher stone fruit that you were getting with the 2021, this is much more the dried fruit, the the raisins, the sultanas those kind of things, the dates I suppose, those dry fruits that are really really make you taste that sherry influence in there. And one of my favourite things about Bonnerhaven, one of my favourite flavour or sensations really in it is that is this idea of salted caramel. There's this kind of salty hint that kind of comes through right at the end when you're tasting it and I love that. It, doesn't taste like salted caramel as such, but it, it's that sensation, it's that sweetness that gives way into saltiness, into salinity, and it's, I just love it. I, I really, really like it, and it's it's so, so good. It's so tasty. And salted caramel is obviously very popular at the moment for good reason, in my opinion. And this is, this is good. It gives me that same kind of, that same feeling. Mm. So, surprisingly, very very different and it was a surprise to me when I tried them how different they were how do I mark those two whiskies can I say that one is better than the other I don't know if I possibly could they're both really really good just different so if if I had to pick one I probably would pick the 2022 edition you just get more of that richness and especially at this time of year when it's cold outside that rich sherried flavour that's coming through is just so so good and when you combine that that sweetness of the sherry and the fruit and that chocolate note with that slight salinity at the end oh 
it's just it's just brilliant so on to the arbitrary scores uh first thing that i have to rate this on is value now you, there might be some 2021 bottles still floating around you might be able to find them but it's probably unlikely you're probably more likely to find the 2022 bottling for between 70 and 80 pounds so this isn't cheap stuff it's not as cheap or as good value perhaps as the standard 12 year old bottling which is around the 40 pound mark but for what you get it's an incredible dram and it's it's really really beautiful stuff so for value i'm going to give this 7 out of 10. on quality i can't really knock it my quality score is a little bit arbitrary, but I, I mean, it's non-chill filtered, it's natural colour, it comes in a very, very high percentage, obviously, all the things that we like to look for, and it's clear from my limited experience of cask knowledge that good casks have been used, I, it, it tastes very much like that. So I can only really give it a 10 out of 10 for quality. And then in terms of what's in the actual bottle, well... Is really really good. This I mark out of fifteen again, completely arbitrary. Um, but on on for these two, I think I think I will give the the twenty twenty one a twelve out of fifteen, and I will give the twenty twenty two a thirteen out of fifteen, just because I, they're outstanding, and and so for me that's going to be a very very high score. So for the twenty twenty one, that gives us an overall score of twenty nine out of thirty five, and for the twenty twenty two, it gives us an overall score of. 30 out of 35 so i hope you can see that i think these are really really good whiskies and if you can get hold of a bottle of the 2022 i'd really really recommend it uh if you you can stretch to that if you can't stretch to that i'd really really recommend going and picking up a bottle of the 12 year old if you've never tried it before because it's absolutely stunning stuff and probably the best value whiskey on the market at the moment in terms of kind of bang for buck i suppose uh i have been told that Julianne, who is the blender who works at Buena Harvin, wants to make this better every single year. And I don't know how she's going to achieve that, but she's achieved incredible things with Buena Harvin already. So there's no reason why the sky can't be the limit for them. Uh, and if it gets better next year, then it will certainly be a treat. And I, I, I'm not giving myself much leeway or room for expansion in my scoring system. So yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. Do like, do give me a subscribe. I, I really appreciate it. I'm just starting out in this and it's all a bit of an experiment at the moment. So anything you can do to help or any feedback you've got, nice, nice and constructive mind though, you know, uh, then do please pop a comment down below. Um, I I'll, I'll, will take the time to read them all and to get back to as many people as I can. So thanks very much and I look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully when it's a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm.